Chicago, Illinois was one of the first cities to change the infrastructure of their inner city landscape through the process of urban renewal. Creating areas for people who live within the city was a vital aspect of urban renewal. However, the land closest to downtown areas was normally already occupied. Bronzeville, a Chicago neighborhood located on the south side of the city. The neighborhood was known as one of the most influential places for African Americans in the early 20th century. Thousands of black families traveled to this location in the Great Migration to escape the oppression of the South. The pulsing energy of Bronzeville was located at 47th Street and South Parkway Boulevard, later renamed Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. People came to see and be seen, shop, conduct business, dine and dance, and experience this bustling black metropolis. The crowds reflected the diverse mix of people living in the black belt, young and old, poor and prosperous, professionals and laborers. Bronzeville's businesses and community institutions were more than alternatives to racially restricted establishments downtown. They were pillars of the community which helped instill pride and contribute to the upper mobility of African Americans. But Bronzeville fell into decline after the end of racially restricted housing. Upper middle families moved away and overpopulation and poverty overwhelmed the neighborhood. <laughs> Forty-six delegates from the city of Chicago formed a group that would help decide how to clear the slums of the South, Chicago South Side. It would be no easy task but because of the large amount of people, mainly African Americans, that were living there. The South Side Planning Board was created and successfully revitalized a large area of the Vonsville community, creating sustainable living for middle-class families. On a 100-acre site, amid of expansive lawns and glass-walled towers, some 7,000 Chicagoans enjoyed the spacious of suburban living through only three miles from the teeming loop. Active participants in the nation's biggest venture in high-grade interracial housing, they are the envied residents of Lake Meadows, Chicago's futuristic Southside development near the Lake Michigan shores. It required one of the biggest raising operations this side of Hiroshima and the relocation of an estimated 3,500 families to clear the site. Yet despite the com combined efforts of city authorities and New York life, more than a decade of planning and negotiating and the building went by before the last systems of blight had been erased and the areas could be reclaimed. The process of creating this futuristic home did not come without a price. Current residents of the Bronzeville neighborhood lost their land due to eminent domain. The state provided very little relocation services, leaving thousands of people to find housing on their own. Even though Lake Meadows was marketed as an interracial community, only a few families could afford to move back to their same neighborhood after the completion of Lake Meadows. New York Life's goal of creating a strictly middle-class neighborhood was slowly coming to fruition. Lake Meadows did not become an interracial middle-class community overnight. Because of its location within the city's black belt, nearly all of its first tenants were African American. As the area gained in attractiveness and four more modern 21-story buildings were added to its original five 12-story structures, white families began to pour in. Many of the residents of Lake Meadows were business executives, bankers, and civil service employees. Because of its close proximity to prominent institutions, including Michael Reese Hospital, Lake Meadows Complex also contained a shopping mall aimed to provide residents with all of their needs. projects have been deemed as a systematic way of removing African Americans from their homes to create areas for whites to reside. However, Lake Meadows did not aim to remove African Americans. New York Life Company worked alongside the city of Chicago to advertise Lake Meadows as fairly to African Americans as they did whites. The use of radio, TV, newspaper, and bus transit ads elevated people's awareness of the Lake Meadows project. 